everyone, my name is Analytical Plum and welcome back to my channel. Before we dive into watching two episodes of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I just wanted to say a big massive thank you for all of your lovely comments and support on my first video. It's so lovely getting to talk to you all. I'm just so excited about this series and love that you are also very excited about this series. And I think we'll just dive straight into it, but before we do, I would love if you would consider subscribing. I do post twice a week, but don't hold me to that. And if you do love my reaction videos or you've been loving the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, I would love if you would leave a like. It does help me out a ton. And without further ado, let's see what these two episodes have for us. That was Nat. We still haven't seen anything about Nat. I did see a comment that they wasn't very happy with their portrayal of Nat. Obviously, I, I can't say anything because I'm only on the beginning of, of episode two and we haven't seen her, so I don't know. I'll try and forget about it, but it's in the corner of my mind. To do. Interview three, Emma Hutton, Andy Bell's best friend. Oh. Me, Andy and Nat. We met in primary school and became completely inseparable. <laughs> she was funny and kind just being around her made you feel special ah is this another thing that's slightly different i'll try not to keep going on about the differences obviously for the people who haven't read the books probably be a bit boring and annoying to them i apologize <laughs> but hearing from her will definitely give a lot of insight as to what's you know what happened around that time what was so sal made her so happy oh he was different to other guys our age like an old-fashioned romantic i mean they hadn't even slept together yet he wanted to wait the vibe coming off of her is very peculiar, isn't it? She really did want to talk about Sal, didn't she? There was no holding her back from that. It's weird how you can get someone so wrong. Uh. I mean, they never even argued. I suppose Andy never did anything wrong. Either this lady is absolutely delusional, <laughs> or Andy said absolutely nothing. Because <laughs> I'm not being gaslit, right? We literally saw at the end of the last episode where Andy was crying. She was in absolute tears, sobbing, apologising to Sal. So if she said sorry, then she must have done something. Would she have told you if they were arguing? Of course. No. I've seen Sal's phone and there were messages on it that showed that they were definitely arguing. What are you saying? That you're wrong. <laughs> I think either you're saying I'm lying or I didn't know my best friend. Which is it? I don't even know why I'm telling you all this. You've not told me anything. I'm done here. Well, that suddenly took a bit of a turn, didn't it? <laughs> well, she obviously didn't like that. And Pip looked on the verge of tears. Huh? Pip fits him over here. Remember? Muffins, star costume, EPQ. I keep saying this, but that is totally a pip thing to do. I mean, obviously. I think I'm the only one who hates talking on the phone like that. I, I just, it doesn't interest me. I remember after they found Sal's body, he didn't sleep for a week. You're not going to tell me I can't do it, are you? I am worried about it, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, considering this is all over her bedroom wall, I think that her mum would have the right to be worried. Just promise me you won't speak to the bells or the sings, yeah? Sure. I don't let it get in the way of anything else. Oh, well. <laughs> bit late for that. <laughs> it's a spreadsheet of all the colleges in Cambridge. About Trinity, where your dad went. Trinity's definitely on the list. Oh. I don't even know what that means. I feel like quite a lot of her things that Pip says, I have no clue, but I just smile and pretend that I actually know what she's saying. <laughs> you and I made a solemn pact to be partners on this case. She barely said anything to me. According to Emma, Sal and Andy never argued. That does say a lot. I don't think that's something that should be written off because it could either mean that A, that Emma has something to hide or B, that Andy has a lot to hide. So there's obviously a lot to unpack somewhere in that. There's obviously a bit of miscommunication. Wish Nat would reply to my messages. Who's Nat? Nat De Silva. Nude gate Nat. Someone leaked her nudes. Hey, at least I know that I've been saying her name right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tick for me, finally, saying people's names right. I mean, I don't think there's much you can get wrong about Pip. 
What do you think the messages to Andy are about? For Sal and Andy, there was always some kind of drama. Why did he hate Sal? His little blonde angel going out with a brown boy. Yeah, especially if her dad is a, you know, a typical English man. Then um, you can see that being an issue. They're not the most open of uh, people. Do you mind talking about Sal? I like it. I don't get to do it much. No. Her face is everywhere. Sal is nowhere. It's like he never existed. Hey, he exists in your hearts. And I know that's not a lot, but it's something. One, two, three. Let's go again. I'm amazed that Ravi did that while still holding the umbrella over the top of them. He has an amazing ability to multitask. It's been really hard for Naomi since Mum died. And then Sal. I know. I'm sorry. See, this is what I meant in the last episode, where they should have waited for a better time, situation and place. Because when they had that explosive row, they were in the middle of a Hastings party, surrounded by rich and probably inconsiderate people, and Pip was drunk. And emotions were heightened because Kara just found out that Pip spoke to Naomi. But this is a better situation. Things can be done in this situation. But you still did it. I think sometimes I get fixated on something and I can't think of anything else. Even things I care about most lightly <laughs> if you want me to stop doing the case i'll stop you can do it but please leave naomi out of it promise promise yeah and anyway we've still got jake who's just another party of that little group that pip hasn't spoken to yet it could pro provide another perspective have you ever sent a nude Okay. Ravi was telling me about Nat Silver's nudes getting shared. He said it was a mystery he sent them. Lucky it was a mystery. Nat is not someone you want to f*** with. Wait, so if she heard that bit, then she probably heard the rest of the conversation. Hopefully not. That's a bit awkward, isn't it? I've got a doubles match against her next week. Hello, chefs. Hi. What are you girls talking about? You. Ten nudes. I mean, same thing. <laughs> Aunt said he'd get me a drink, and then he was gone. I went to look for him, and I found him and Stella in Mr. and Mrs. Hastings' walk-in wardrobe. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's really bad. <laughs> to be fair, we haven't really seen much of her, have we? Of Lauren. I just feel like she's one of the friends where you just rarely see, and she just pops up every now and again when she wants to complain about something. Doing what? You know. No. King. Shh. Match point to silver to serve. Sometimes you have to say it bluntly. <laughs> Maybe it's not the best time to talk to her. She's throwing rackets around like the, I don't know, pillows. Pillows are softer. Maybe I shouldn't have compared pillows to a tennis racket. <laughs> You're a How do you feel? Pip certainly picks the right times, didn't she? <laughs> Good game. Good game. I'm doing a school project on the Andy Bell cases. Ask you some questions. Imagine giving a whole interview topless for someone's school project. No, oh, that <laughs> dodgy situation. Don't be shy. Everyone's seen it all before. Oh. When she turned a beam of light onto you, it felt warm. It felt like you were her entire world. Why do you think Sal and Andy argued so much? I guess when that beam moved elsewhere, it felt cold. So she knew about the arguing? I suppose, as she said, beams of light and feeling good. Maybe. That was the whole pitting the friends against each other, Emma and Nat. It's going to get a bit confusing because <laughs> I'm picturing how it is in the book. Well, how I know it is from the book and it's different. And I'm trying to wrap my head around this new format. I'll try my best not to get confused. She'd start sleeping with someone new. But she wasn't sleeping with Sal. You said sleeping with someone new. Who do you mean? Did I say that? Did I actually say that? <laughs> Don't you think that this situation is actually really weird when you're watching it? Like just discussing, well, from that perspective, discussing your best friend's sex life with a stranger who's doing this as a school topic. Isn't that just bizarre? You seem nice, Pippa. You don't know what you're digging up. Be careful. Oh. Oh, I've tried so hard to separate the book from the series. It's difficult. So Nat's kind of taken a new role and her original character was kind of erased nat was never nice to pip maybe at the beginning once she was nice she said be careful that's weird can we go daniel hello why is he doing that how bizarre <laughs> Release. Okay, I'll only be going for one night. Okay, who's driving? I told you, me. 
Pip is responsible. I love her parents and how involved they are. They are genuinely probably one of the sweetest entertainment parents out there. I adore them. Also, can I just say, I've never been camping, but I think I would never do that. It seems so terrifying just being out there in the night. As you know, probably time and time again, I've said I'm scared of the dark. So this is probably one of my worst nightmares. Clowning around is the number one cause of teenage automobile fatalities. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's a genuine statistic, do you? <laughs> Love you. Love you very much. Forever and a day. Creep. Uh. I want more of them, please. And thank you. That's my request. She got into a car with the guy from the party. Are Emma and Nat still in touch? I don't think so. Give me your number. What are you going to do? You'll see. Well, at this point, Pip's just doing everything without Ravi. Is, it, is she even letting him do anything? Maybe we'll see him take action in this episode. But will we? I don't know. Maybe we'll see it in the next episode. Smart. See, I don't know if it's just me, but if a random number messaged me, I'd find it very, very suspicious. Because usually you'd message people beforehand and be like, hey, I'm getting a new number, just a heads up. So if someone messaged, you know, after Pip came round trying to investigate, I would find that so suspicious. <laughs> Oh dear. No, this must be so awkward for Ravi because it, Andy was going out with his brother and then you find out that Andy was cheating on him and you can't even tell him because he's kind of a bit dead. I suppose it's a good thing that he never found out. Well, that we know of. Nice work, Sarge. Sarge? <gasps> Not a detective inspector yet. This is where it begins. Oh, it's so sweet seeing these moments. It's a good little unite in the wilderness. Camping's not really my thing. Me neither. Me neither. I've rambled about it already. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Couple parties. Might go clubbing. Really? Nope. <laughs> Thought so. <laughs> we'll shift at the pub, bus home, followed by an all-night gaming session in my bedroom. That sounds really nice, actually. No, you've got to meet Kara. No, yeah. no, it's fine. Kara, Ravi, Ravi, Kara. Do you know when you have like different friend groups? I had different friend groups because you know, you know from school and then when I went to dance and so whenever I saw them combine it was always just really weird and I feel like this is what this situation is really reminding me of. The two should never mesh. It just feels like a sort of matrix has been broken. Did my mate you sing the drive safety song? Of course. Is she still oblivious to the double meaning of the word strap on? <laughs> Go I'm so excited for this bit. I think this is probably, I wouldn't say it's my favourite, but it was definitely one of my favourite parts reading the book. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you will find out. Well, maybe, I don't know, they might change it. <laughs> I want to see more friend bonding time. This one is for the birthday girl. This is for the rest of us. Yes! Yeah. Happy birthday! Who's going to tell a ghost story? Oh, Pip, give us your top five Andy Bell killer suspects. I suppose that quite literally is a bit of a ghost story, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like I just had my mind blown. If you're right and Sal didn't kill Andy, then whoever did is still out there. And if they find out you're looking for them, isn't there a chance they could come after you? <laughs> yeah. Have you guys heard about the duct tape killer? He wraps duct tape around his victims' faces or he strangles them to death. <laughs> Moving on. What are we doing? We're playing Charlie Charlie. Oh, because this is going to run badly. I have not heard that in years. Oh, my leg. Ow. I feel like this series is just, just full of nostalgia for me and just reminds me of how old I'm getting. Andy, will you speak to us? <gasps> no way. They never found her body. Yeah, they never found her body, so she might not even be dead after this whole time. People just assume she's dead because it's been, what, five years? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you, me, and the rest of us are the bottom feeders. Aunt, Ruby, and the rest of them exist on the surface. The boatman and the damselflies. I think she might still be drunk. <laughs> Why Ruby Foxcroft? Well, you've been off having secret assassinations with Ravi Singh. Whoa! That's why you're so interested in Sal's cave. It's not why I'm doing it. But it is a little added benefit, though, on the side. <laughs> Stop! There's someone there. Oh. 
I told you this was a very, very, very bad idea. And everyone's drunk, so what use are they gonna be? I think the safest thing is to just go back to the tent. Numbers are safer, you've got to stick together. It was a f***ing serial killer. <laughs> Statistically, you're more likely to die in a bath than get murdered by a serial killer. I love how blunt she is. A hiker who got lost. Or it was the ghost of Andy Bell. Or it was just a hiker who got lost. It could have been Bigfoot. Maybe he wanted to go to the toilet as well. And he can't see in the dark very well, so needed a light. Never know what's happening. <laughs> And so it begins. Technically she's not, she doesn't have a shovel. Duh. How could you sleep after that? No way she's sleeping. I can't believe summer's nearly over. And then it's our last year at school and then... I don't want to talk about it. How come you only told Lauren that she liked her? I didn't tell her, she guessed. Well, why didn't I guess? you're not really interested in all that stuff. Oh, bless her. I mean, I don't really know. I haven't been in that situation. But ain't it usually when you're in a group of three, it's always a bit hard because there's a bit of a, a weird dynamic where it's never fully equal. Now, to be fair, though, Pip does have quite a lot going on and I don't think she's a Kara's favourite at the moment, considering what's happened. I've known you since you were four. Nothing's ever going to change between us. Oh. Well, he didn't look the happiest, did he? That looks quite explosive. I hope Naomi's okay. Hello? Don't tell me that's another note. No. That was so evil. How dare you? <laughs> A bit rubbish they're not really closing properly are they might want to get blackout blinds i think they'll be much better <laughs> hello again daniel i think i'm crazy 100 percent. no i'd say more dedicated i'd be quite impressed if i'm honest what am i looking at Stan De Silva, Nat De Silva's brother. He's a police officer who worked on the case. Don't you think it's a bit mad how, I mean, we don't really know what the police have done, but don't you think it's mad that Pip's able to figure all this out on her own without any special equipment or anything? But that's, a, that's genuinely amazing. Could he be Secret Older Guy? Yeah. Could he be covering for Nat? Maybe. How old would Secret Older Guy, like, what was the consideration of the age for that? Hey! I'm just putting them in chronological order. A little surprised you haven't done it already, to be honest. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Andy, Emma, Nat. All the way to here. April. It's just Andy and Emma. When were the nudes leaked? It was April. Things are starting to line up. You said it was a mystery you sent them. But if it was Andy? Could be. Next time we need to get the steak out for you, right? What's wrong with crisps? Too noisy. You just need the right type of crisps. Like, if you get skips, they just melt on your tongue. Or what's it? Perfect. You don't even have to crunch, it just dissolves. What about marshmallows? It's got to be the quietest food in the world. Perfect. But ain't that still sticky? I don't know, I don't eat marshmallows. You know it was Andy who shared your nudes. You think that Andy released my nudes and I killed her in vengeance? I mean, it's not exactly far-fetched, is it? Anything could have happened at this point. Andy was my best friend. You and Andy fell out just before she disappeared. I had a row with Sal the night before he died. Still feels bad. And also, typically... I don't know where I've heard this from, but typically with crimes, you know, murders. It's usually the people closest to them and it's very unsuspecting. She started hanging out with this guy who's just a nasty piece of work. Max Hastings. He's twisted. Ugh. So if she's telling the truth, Max has lied. What a surprise. Max said he literally never spoke to her. He lied. Well, maybe you just forgot. Max could be a dick, but he's around our house all the time. I don't think that's something that you would just forget. I think you're giving him the benefit of the doubt, and it's massively undeserved. <laughs> okay, I'm this way. Do you want me to walk you home? I'm fine, but thanks. I'm nervous with the fact that she'll be walking home alone in the dark. That's like number one red flag. Hello? Hi. I'm a friend of Max's. <gasps> no. Max is upstairs. Just follow the smell of Paco Rabanne. Thanks. A list is not links Africa. That lingers. No, I'm so worried. 
when I said it's a red flag that she's walking out home alone in the dark, I didn't mean for her to go straight to Max's house. I think that's an even worse danger. Is he in the shower? Is Pip just gonna see everyone naked this episode? <laughs> She is very brave. And I see if you come across a sock, leave it. Don't touch it. What are you doing? I'm terrified. I didn't sleep with Andy. You wanted to though. Found it in a classroom in school. Keep it by my bed for inspiration that is disgusting see if you find a sock leave it just because i can appreciate the female form doesn't mean i'd screw my best friend's girlfriend yeah but it's really dodgy though so we finally caught on andy sold drugs she sold them at calamity parties mainly so i guess we're going to a calamity party i was so interested because in the books it gave off like a really bad house party vibes where you just put on spotify and have a bit of flashing lights but the ones we saw in the trailer was like a proper fancy nightclub such a good girl pip are you really ready for that okay. apparently so such a good girl pip are you really ready for that <laughs> that's really evil of the producers to put in sale <laughs> sales dead <laughs> I really want to go to a calamity party. You want to what? I realise it's somewhat out of character. Somewhat? This is probably extremely concerning for her friends. Especially considering the fact that she just said that she doesn't understand why people drink alcohol. <laughs> There's a bit of a 180 since that night. Pip, you hate parties. They say try everything once. Plus, aunt will be there. <laughs> I don't really look up the cast beforehand as evident when I was confused about Pip's brother. But I don't even know what Ant looks like. I don't even know which one of those were Ant. So I don't know which one that she's supposed to be lusting after. How do we find it? These things are super secret. Lucky you were such good problem solvers then. Just go to the most popular and party-like people. There. Problem solved. Oh, what's wrong? It's fine. It's fine. I just like pick a pass post. That is probably one of the worst 21st century problems. And I'm not even being sarcastic. I, th I don't know if that's happened to me before. But I feel like if it did, I would actually cry. The name was just right. The location was shared at midday the Monday before the party. But that's like now. This is like a, a proper established secret thing for school kids. I'm quite impressed if I'm honest. So that, that's, they're not exactly being that inconspicuous. They're hashtagging it and posting it all over their social. Do you know what? There are some impressive media detectives out there i reckon if someone were to actually want to find out it would be discovered in like two seconds flat <laughs> love that dance challenge you posted I'm surprised it didn't trend was that ant you have to game the algorithm just have to adjust your visibility settings i could do it for you if you like again pip is so smart i've tried it as a numerical code in case they're coordinates well, doesn't look like english it's a code breaking game oh like what three words must be really weird having your parent as a teacher. I don't think I'd be able to do that. Also, I've never understood that. It's always confused me. And when it first came out, all of like the older relatives were like raving about it, and I just never understood it, which is weird because usually it's the other way around. <laughs> I am not Watson. Okay, well I am clearly Sherlock. I've got that sexy Cumberbatch energy, and you're clearly Martin Freeman. I there are some times when the accent goes a bit skew if and I think that's probably been one of the worst. This and when she said starter, that was very posh. <laughs> it comes and goes. I think I'm still on the positive side of her accent. I don't mind it, I'm not fussed. Max said the dealer could be at a calamity. I need to follow the drugs. You could come too. You're on your own for this one. See, is Ravi actually going to do any investigative work? Because he's complaining about not doing anything and Pip doing everything. But all he's done was message Nat pretending to be Emma. Is he going to get more involved? <sighs> She's way out of my league. Says who? Hey, you've got great teeth. You won the bleep test three years in a row. <laughs> if those are what Pip view as positive attributes, then I don't think her ideal partner would have uh, much high expectations. Take some money from my wallet for a cab home, yeah? Anyone offers you any drugs, just take half first, <laughs> okay? No, shh. <laughs> 
Okay. That's how we met. No, dear. Memories. Off we go. It's not. That's not. That's not. Parents are like the dream. That's what I've been just saying. They're amazing. It's a rave. They're not gonna have pina coladas. That says a party's never a party without pina coladas. Not for me, that. I hate pineapple, but pineapple seems to be in everything, and it sucks. You can call me patient zero. You can say you got it. My first response is going to are they partying in a cave? I thought it was supposed to be like a fancy house. <laughs> I must have got something wrong or mixed up. Seriously, where are they? Why is the mountain giving birth to them? Car award. Don't think this is your scene. It's not. Usually. Come and dance. I believe in her. I think she's got this. Yes, cool. You don't have to go if you don't want to. I'll go. Pip's turning into a completely different person through this series. At least bring half back home for your dad. <laughs> I'm way too sober. Go get it if you want. Oh, not for me. Makes me feel too special. Pip, I never knew you had this in you. Last calamity. Got these mad shrooms off my dealer. It got so fucked up. <laughs> what do you do, right? If you don't like mushrooms do people eat magic mushrooms if you don't like mushrooms <laughs> surely surely that don't go very well see here your dealer why do you want to see my dealer i just want to let loose she's doing really well just saying i want to remind everyone that this is just for an epq project this is at the end of the day this is really not worth the effort just for our epq where are we going to meet howie in there well, that's not suspicious. Aren't you coming? Nah, I'll wait. What, are they feeding her to the sharks? Hi, I'm a friend of Dylan's. Look, owes me 60 quid. I could pay back. You know what, that scene is definitely realistic. <laughs> I can tell you that. I've got three questions for you. 20 pounds per question. Oh. What? Hi. I suppose that's the only thing that would attract his attention, wouldn't it? Way. But isn't that her money for her cab ride home? How's she gonna get home? How does she get here? Is it true Andy Bell used to deal drugs for you? Yeah. What kind? Red hypno. Isn't that a date rape drug? Andy was the perfect decoy until she wasn't. Doesn't that sound a bit threatening? Makes me laugh a little bit because at school we were taught about the different kind of drugs. Mainly just to scare us off a bit. But then when I mentioned it to my granddad, he was very, very shocked that I knew different kinds of drugs. Fun story. A golden girl like Andy who kept a stash in a toy bunny but never found a burner phone, never found me. Ah! Where were you on the 19th of April? Are you accusing me of something? No. Sounds like you are. No, it literally does feel like she's in Tiger's Den. <laughs> Hey, but at least we know now that there was a burner phone somewhere. That will probably tell a lot more. Or maybe not, maybe it's just the deals. I suppose it could tell us if there's a deal gone wrong. Thinks I deal drugs or go around murdering teenage girls? No. Oh, hey, but wait, he didn't answer. That was a waste of £20. What's the matter? Hey, hey you're safe now. <laughs> Is she? You actually look cute with your scarf. Come here. Ew. You wanted to loosen up. Everything okay? Alright, you little creep. Come on. I'll walk you back. They seem quite nice. Please don't tell me this is someone else trying to take advantage of her. I don't think she can handle much more. Watch out, yeah? Bad chick at these parties. Keep an eye on your drink. That is an understatement. Seriously. But you should do that at any party. I think it's time to leave now. What do you do? I'm thinking if I go by the catacombs, I'm definitely gonna get eaten by zombies. Don't go by the catacombs then. This is genuinely so sweet. I loved these little moments between them. I'm glad they're still keeping these sort of bits in. As much as the story is important, Important. These little bits between them are also as equally important. Otherwise, if it gets towards the end of the series and these bits aren't there, then it would not go as well. I've been feeling bad that I didn't come with you. After Andy went missing, people have treated me, my mum and my dad like we're all guilty. But I feel bad I wasn't there for you. Must be scary though. Like we saw right at the beginning, they graffitied the house. We've heard bits and pieces about how horribly he's been treated. You wouldn't want to put yourself in that situation of being in like the line of fire. So it's quite understandable why he didn't want to go. I wouldn't want to go in that situation. It's okay. I forgive you, Ravi. Okay, Sarge. Good night. The dick goes back. She's popular tonight. That is definitely not from Ravi.
at least in this situation now it's easier because in the woods you don't know that could have been anyone there's absolutely no lead or connection but with this I think it'll be easier because you know who you would hand out your phone number to or you could ask around and see how your phone number's gotten out or, you know I feel like it's easier to track I know what you're doing you're investigating Eddie's case aren't you just have one question why poor EPQ it sounds really pathetic when you say it like that <laughs> like just for a school project that's really bad isn't it we got her smile wrong she had a, a dimple just here people act like this stuff is for the dead person but it's not it's for them i'm a bit confused was she talking about the memorial or trying to figure out what happened i assume she's talking about the memorial <laughs> you think it would have been so funny if Ravi worked in a weather spoons. <laughs> I think I think that would have actually been amazing. I know they probably couldn't because, you know, it's copyrighted and stuff. They'd probably have to pay out a ton, but I thought it'd be quite funny. I'm really sorry, but I'm not gonna be able to come today. Something's just come up so I can't. Hey, it's okay. Don't worry, just call me when you can about the calamity party. Oh no, Pip. You can't leave Ravi hanging. That looks like such a nice drink. And then Lauren said you'd disappeared into some cave hole with Dylan. It was fine. I do want to know what happened with you and Ruby. I left a man behind. And I'm no. really sorry. I just wanted to laugh without saying anything. I don't know what it is, but it just feels like the dynamic of the friendship group is a bit weird. I know that Kara and Pip are really close and have been close for a very long time. But you, you never see them all together much. I went to the party to talk to a guy who knew Andy. Suspect. Scary. It's just... Usually I know what to do. Speaking with Becca has really thrown her off, hasn't it? Since then, she's just been a bit all over the place. Well, not all over the place, but, you know, been a bit hesitant. I don't like seeing hesitant Pip. I know, just kind of like my head's all over the place. Probably is, though. There's a lot going on. So I spoke to Elliot earlier and he mentioned that you've been hanging out with uh, Ravi Singh. No, I haven't. Don't lie to me. Elliot. What a traitor, man. I liked her in Horrible History, so I give you that. But you can't go rat it off to Pip's mum. How dare you? You promised me that you would not bother those families. Anyway, Victor and I have discussed it and we've decided that it's not an appropriate topic. Elliot's going to talk to you on Monday about choosing a new topic. I mean, if you look at her wall, it is very concerning, isn't it? <laughs> I would be equally as worried about Pip as her mum is right now. It's really not healthy. Vic's doing his uh, minty lamb. Do you want to come and help with chopping duties? That sounds really nice. Oh no, I fancy that. This series just makes me hungry. <laughs> She's got so many leads now. So much to go off of. You can't stop now. So, are you going to tell me what we're doing here? Andy kept her drug stash hidden in a toy rabbit. And she had a burner phone. Are they going into the Bell's house? She really is not doing anything her mum wanted her to, is she? She's doing literally everything her mum asked her not to. I'm terrified of what our mum would do if she were to find out about all of this. You're suggesting we break into the Bell's? Not break. Sneak. Same, same. Are you sure everything's okay? Why wouldn't it be? Okay. Take a breather. You can tell me I'm insane if you want. I'm still doing it. I mean, you are insane. But that's why a Sherlock needs a Watson. <laughs> Ravi needs to be there to keep her humble. <laughs> if I see danger, I'll text your code word. What code word? Marshmallow. Of course. <laughs> I think that is the happiest code word I've ever heard. See, half of this wouldn't be able to happen if everyone had ring doorbells. <laughs> It'd be so much harder to do any of this. And that's why you should have a hiding place that is completely different to what everyone else usually does. <laughs> and there's a rabbit. She's been having a habit of sneaking into people's rooms now. Maybe this should be a good girl's guide to breaking into people's rooms. I think Pip has committed so many crimes. I, I would love somebody to search up how many crimes Pip commits throughout this whole series. I think that would be so interesting. What if Howie was just metaphorical about all of this? And they're just butchering a rabbit for no reason. Marshmallow, Marshmallow, Becca's back. What? Has she muted her phone? 
Pip's gonna murder two bunnies. Why? What are you doing? I was marshmallowing you. There's another bit of stuffing on the floor. The stuffing. Monty? Oh dear. It's like she's staring into my soul. You best go answer that. Oh my god. This poor bunny, man. Back. Wouldn't want a cup while I look around. Daniel, don't you just hate it when you broke into someone's house and a police officer comes in? What bad luck. <laughs> they best not have slammed the front door. Go, 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 go! I'm going, I'm going, I'm going! Safety first. <laughs> and now you've got Daniel after you. Great. So that was my reaction to episode 2 and 3 of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. As the series is going on, I am noticing a few tad bits here and there that are a bit, I wouldn't say annoying, but like, are on my mind. Sometimes when the characters say some things, they say it so quickly or they just, the music's too loud and I can't hear what they're saying. So I have to rewind it quite a few times so I can actually understand what they're saying. And I, I think it could have been solved if they just you know, did a retake and just made sure to clarify their words because I don't really understand it sometimes. And then of course, Pip's accent is a bit eh, hit and miss at the moment. It's still positive as I said earlier but not much of a problem for me but you can tell sometimes that it's definitely a put on accent but it's a bit obvious sometimes but apart from that I'm really enjoying it so far feel free to comment down below anything you thought of this series whether good or bad I would love to talk to you about this and I will see all of you in my next video